Hey everyone, welcome back to the second part of the Sketchbook Pro tutorial. Last time I went through all the tools of Sketchbook, this time around I want to show you how to actually use these tools to create product sketches. And as a product I chose a beer trimmer. So let's jump right into it. I start this tutorial by doing several sketches, ideating what sort of shape I want my beer trimmer to have. What I'm using here is a symmetry tool, which is perfect when you are sketching symmetrical shapes. During ideating phase, I really just want to see the shape form and the faster I get out more different shapes, the better it is for the process. I use Hudson Rio and Kevin Mellon brushes. I presented these last time, but I will leave links in the description as well. For the initial sketch, I used Mellon's Pencil 002 brush because it is very rough and sketchy. After I'm done with the initial top view sketches, I X out a couple that I don't think I'm going to continue with, and for the rest I create a 3D view, so I understand their forms better. I'm not trying to get too detailed with these three quarter views, I'm just trying to explore the shape also from other sides. Since I was left with three versions after my initial elimination process, I will do three quick three quarter sketches. Here I will repeat the elimination process again, narrowing it down to one final model, for which I will have at least a top and a three quarter view. In this case though, the model I liked more, I also did a side view for, so I ended up with three views that I can utilize. The next step is to copy all the three views and place them on a different layer. Here I will try and rearrange so the page will have a more interesting composition and the whole thing will look more presentable. This usually can take a while because you have to push them around until you have a right feel and this can go on for a little bit. After I'm done, as always, I like to put a border around it. I also recolor my lines with blue to have a clear separation between my setup sketch layer and my final lines layer. The recoloring I do by locking the layer and just going over the lines with a thick blue brush. Here I use the Hudson Rio full opacity brush. After that I turn down the opacity of this sketch layer and create a new layer on top of it, which I will use for my final clean lines. On this new layer, I try to be as precise as I can with my lines, switching to Hudson Rio line work pencil. Here you can see why the ellipse tool is the friend of the industrial designer. I stopped in the middle of the drawing and I jumped to the other view because it wasn't quite clear how the mechanism would work. I still didn't solve the whole problem, but at least I got a little bit of a clarity and I could adjust the top view to how I think a possible mechanism could work. After I drew out this mechanism in the side view, I could jump back to the top view and finish that part of the line work as well. Here you can also see how I use the French curve. I adjust and switch between different French curves until I find one that I like and then I enlarge it and rotate it until I find the best coverage for the line I want to draw. I rarely use the French curve, but when you have a really intriguing and interesting line in your product, it can really come in handy. From here on, I just continue with drawing and adding the lines. I will jump back with commentary as soon as I have more interesting things to share. So here I took the sketch of this view and put it on a different layer because I was pretty sure that it's going to need more detailing. Which usually means I'm going to do another sketch of this drawing and not immediately go to the final lines. This you can also see here at the cutting mechanism. I go with much much rougher lines. At this point I don't care that much about the lines so I freely transform, cut and rotate them. Thank you. 
After I'm done with sketching out this view of the trimmer, I'm going to change colors for this one as well. In this case, I'm using red, and when I'm done with that, I simply lower the opacity and draw over it on my previously established clean lines layer. Now that I'm done with the lines, I'm going to draw a border around the visuals. The next step is to clear my layers a bit, but for that I create a folder in which I put all my sketch layers and I turn off the visibility for this folder. After this is done, I can start coloring the visuals. For this I create a new layer just below the lines layer. I use the full opacity pen brush to color in each view just between the lines, making sure that I don't go outside the lines. I start with the top view here, I can use a symmetry tool again, so I only have to color in half of it. After I colored just inside the lines, I can fill the rest of the inside with paint bucket. But because of anti-aliasing, 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 I don't know, softening up the edges of the brush strokes, I will end up with a thin white line where the paint bucket colors meets the brushed in color. I will go over this line with my brush to cover it. After I'm done coloring all the views, I duplicate the color layer to have a backup. I'll start filling one of these color layers with the colors I actually want to use, in this case grays and blacks. I'm using mostly the airbrush tool because I want to have soft edges, but I'm also going to use the lasso tool, which is the L key, and I'm going to make some selections and brush in those with the airbrush, this way creating a nice hard and soft edge contrast. When I'm far enough with the shading, I decide I want to separate some of the parts of the design. I draw them in with red the same way I did the main coloring before. This is done on a new layer and as always, I lock transparency of my layers after I'm done. On this layer, I didn't care about going outside of the lines because I have a neat trick how to fix that. I select everything outside the colored areas in the previous layer and use that selection to delete everything on the new layer that is outside the lines. I use the same method of using soft brushes and very soft hard brushes to add different shadings where the light hits with the darker and lighter colors, in this case with the red. On the red parts I'm trying to follow the same shadow and lighting pattern I used in the main grey and dark parts.
after I'm done with the shading, I decided that the metal part should have more of a blue hue. So I paint over the area of the cutting part with blue. Then I set that layer mode to colors. Because this isn't shiny enough, I go back to the previous layer of grays and I paint in high contrasts between the darks and the lights. Switching back to blue layer again, we get a really nice metallic blue effect. The same way as before, I make sure to delete all the parts that are outside the lights. And as always, I like to add a little bit of texture to my drawings to give it that bit of a bite. In this case, I looked for rubber handles. I think these were bike handles and while I usually use overlay mode for these, in this case I used hard light mode. This is because the texture kind of disappeared in overlay mode on the strongly saturated and bright red. So always make sure to try out what layer setting works best for your needs. I also erased a couple of parts from the hard light layer where I wanted some of the details to pop out more strongly. And because hard light mode is also a little bit darker, I lowered the opacity to 55 to 50 of these layers just so it's not that dark and harsh. In the end, I made sure to name everything and rearrange my layers and folders. If there is interest, I will make a separate video on how I keep my layers and folders clean and tidy. In the end, I created a highlights layer and added some extra shine and highlights here and there. Because I didn't want to put too much effort into drawing all the little individual blades, I decided to just give a suggestion of this with the help of some texturing and photo bashing. I was looking at different beard trimmers and I just copied the blades of some trimmers that I liked. I pasted these images into a new layer. I set the layer properties to overlay and I erased the parts that I didn't care for. I used two different blades because one had a better set of cutting blades, meanwhile the other had better details regarding its screws. So you don't always have to draw in everything, especially if you're just doing some quick presentation drawings like this. It is enough if you suggest what the form and shape and function are going to be. I was feeling that the white background didn't work that well, so I gave it a grayish background with gradients toward the white. Another thing that I like to do, especially in this case, where I did all the sketches in the beginning for the shape exploration, is to show off all that work a little bit. So I bring those sketches back in the background. To make this pop, I lock the transparency of the layer and color the lines white. But I also make sure to turn down the opacity so it won't be too overwhelming. From here I copy pasted this row of sketches several times and fill the whole background with them.
But yeah, that was what I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope this was helpful and you can use Sketchbook Pro more bravely now. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and leave me a comment if you have any questions or would like to add something. I love to read what your thoughts are on these processes. Also, consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. You can follow me on Instagram for regular updates on more drawing related stuff. I am probably going to go on a couple of weeks vacation for winter holidays, so I wish you a fantastic holidays and happy new year and see you folks next year. Bye bye!